Ladies and gentlemen, imagine you're Donald Trump, and for the past year, well, year and a half, well, about year, no, year, the past year, you've been blamed entirely, like, they've said it's your fault. Everything that we've experienced the past uh, 12 months is your fault. You didn't take it seriously. You slept. Uh, you fiddled while Rome perished. You did all of these things. And now you have Andrew Cuomo, who's not only whose skeletons are coming out of the closet, just like the Lincoln Project, so there's a like a list of political rivals that have just completely imploded and become absolute dis absolutely disgraced. And we knew, like the Lincoln Project was a disgraced organization even before this year. They were the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld uh, people. They were the ones who pushed us into never-ending conflict. That's okay for never-ending counterinsurgency quagmires. That's okay for Democrats. They don't even care. If you tell somebody, hey, I'm voting for President Trump because he, wanted, he wants to remove Americans from a certain region of the world, they, don't, they simply don't care. That's not enough. Like, President Trump's actions... The positive things that he did for this country, record low unemployment throughout most of his tenure, that's a fact. And the highest unemployment rates are in Democratic-run states. The worst, that's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, not Trump's fault. The lowest unemployment rates are in red states. The best outcomes pertaining to what's the crisis has been in red states. The worst outcomes, you can look at the New York Times statistics. One out of every five lives lost is in either New York or California. But you have Schumer and Gillenbrand and de Blasio, but you had de Blasio the other day. You have Schumer and Gillenbrand calling for Cuomo to re resign. Think about Trump now. His direct political rival in Andrew Cuomo, well, his direct political rival in Clinton purchased a dossier that the United States government used under President Obama to frame and set him up and frame and set up everyone around him. But, and that, that dossier, by the way, never had disclaimers on Twitter. Oh, this is a disputed claim. Anyway, hit subscribe to this channel really quickly. To my new Patreons, thank you. Your support is so greatly appreciated. So, thank you so very much. If you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below and in the description section and on hagoodman.com. You could read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, The Daily Caller, other publications, The Roanoke Times. You can see my debates there. I'm working on something really special and so uh, I'll, I'll unveil that, release that very soon. You will love it. Um, let's read this right now. Top Dems call on Cuomo to resign amid allegations. It, it's interesting, too, because the 15,000 lives that are lost because of his decision-making and the decision-making of Whitmer in Michigan, there were uh, thousands of lives linked to sending infected people into elderly care facilities and facilities that help disabled Americans. So, um, where was the outrage or scrutiny? It's interesting because there's no more outrage anymore. Now Democrats are just mired in this Twitter-fueled, cyber-reality um, obsession with... Ideas that wouldn't even gain traction outside of Twitter or the internet or, you know, social media. But anyway, that's a whole other story. They don't have Trump anymore to blame. He's not on Twitter. Twitter President Trump must never, he should never again get on Twitter. You watch. They're going, to, they're going to say, oh, the band's over. You can get back on Twitter right before midterms. Don't do it. It'll be a trap. My God Almighty, it's, it'll be the worst thing ever because... Look what's taking place now. If Trump was still on Twitter, we might not see this with Cuomo. You have a top Democrat in uh, in 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 uh, New York, somebody who's very courageous, Ron Kim, who first went up against Cuomo for all the lives lost in the, uh, in the elderly care facilities. Cuomo, Whitmer, uh, Wolf in Pennsylvania, Newsom, and Phil Murphy all put infected people into elderly care facilities. So how do you get away with this? Well, you have to be a Democrat first. Media will not 
go after Democrats until, until the allegations are seven people. Then they say, well, Trump has 26. Yeah, okay, not one person, not one person filed a police report. uh, President Biden, our wonderful president, uh, very awesome and uh, energetic and fantastic man, he, he had a police report filed against him okay, at a police station. And the New York Times said, well, you know, if you file a report and it's not true, you could be in big trouble. It's like, yeah, way to believe. (laughs) I mean, you're talking about oftentimes the most hypocritical, disingenuous, duplicitous uh, people. I mean, they're really political. Like, if if you live your life and you're an ideologue on the left, anything goes. So you'll, you'll actually, how many people, how many wonderful, morally superior, righteous liberals bought Andrew Cuomo's book on leadership lessons? If you bought his book on leadership lessons, that says something really wonderful about you. He has a book on leadership lessons, and there are 15,000 lives directly linked to his decision making. You cannot link, you cannot link any decision Trump made to lives being lost. On a federal, uh, he's the president of the United States of America. They say they, they keep saying, "Oh, he said it would be over." <laughs> he said it would be over. Yeah, Cuomo said the same thing. He said even worse. New York became the epicenter. One out of every five lives lost are in New York or California. Go to the go to the New York Times statistics. Forty percent of all the lives lost are in seven Democratic-run states. Seven of the top eleven that have the highest number of greatest number of lives lost. They downplayed it when it suited them. Then they claimed that Trump downplayed it. Okay? You cannot blame Trump for what took place. He's one man. He's a president in charge of the, primarily the federal government. Then they say, well, you know, uh, they, they, there's no way that the shot in the arm will be um, available. And he got it done. Okay? He got it done. Now everyone's taking, okay, and just, I'm trying to be algorithmically friendly. You never know nowadays. You say one word, and it's a big problem. But they're taking it, and, you know, I'm going to take it, you're going to take it, and so then, well, you don't, you, don't, you don't thank Trump? Then they say, well, he didn't have a plan to distribute you think that at that you think that any Democratic governor would listen to Trump, even if that were true, which it probably isn't. You don't think Democratic governors would complain about something Trump is doing? No, literally nothing the man did, from Operation Warp Speed to being the first president to step foot in North Korea to really reversing U.S. foreign policy. That's why I voted for Trump. I'm a former lefty. I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post, the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. You could see, th- you could see the, the links on hagoodman.com, but I'm going to vote for anyone who wants to bring Americans home from never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. We should not be sending American men and women off to never-ending quagmires and conflict. That is not a concern of Democrats or morally superior liberals on Twitter. Okay? But you notice, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's, my, it's a concern for me, which is why I voted for President Trump. Trump removed Americans from numerous countries. Uh, he set an end date, negotiated for an end to our involvement in a country we've been in for 20 years. May 1st, 2021. So... You have these achievements and these accomplishments allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever. And what happened was this. His tweets became, his image, his public relations persona became a life of its own. The majority of the country, unfortunately, does not know who the real President Trump is because he played into the the heel uh, in in like a, you know, WWE... um, I mean, pro wrestling. There's the heel and the baby face. Well, he played into the heel. He said, "You want you don't you don't you don't like me? I'm gonna play into this." And he nobody got to see his, his human side. And journalists never wanted to, but he played into it. 
And President Trump, instead of just getting off Twitter, he kept on poking and he kept on taking a baseball bat and, you know, just bashing this hornet's nest of apoplectic, hysterical, seething, fuming, uh, disgruntled, you know, outraged journalist, journalists. And they wrote that he was the end, like, to, to the average Democrat and wonderful, morally superior liberal, he's the end of the universe. Do you understand? Bush actually, <laughs> actually destabilized an entire region of the world with his decision-making. Trump did not. Trump presided over the Abraham Accords, which is the beginning, like a roadmap towards peace for one region of the world. You might, if you're on the left, you might say, well, that's not the roadmap we want. Well, it's still a roadmap towards peace. It really is. You t- ask the countries. Peace between Israel, UAE, Morocco, uh, Bahrain. Okay. The diplomats within those four countries know a lot more about, you know, peace within that region than a left-wing activist. That's a whole other story. Of course, things need to happen for, for there to be long-term peace. But anyway, you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, a you're looking at, oh, by the way, hit subscribe. And oh, I, said, I, I think I said also I'll have a live stream later this evening. So to my 11-minute crowd, I will have a live stream later this evening, probably around 8 or 9 p.m. tonight. So be there. But you look at, Cuomo, his decision-making was horrendous. He's now, (laughs) this is a political victory and a triumph of epic proportions for Trump, which really, it's not, he didn't have to do anything. Once Democrats are left, like, to just look into the mirror, they don't have Trump to rally against. They don't know how to govern. Okay, this stimulus is not a victory. It is not, they they run Congress, so it's not a victory. (laughs) The stimulus is not a victory at all. Why? You tanked your economies because science. And you have the worst outcomes in terms of the pandemic. According to the New York Times statistics, in seven states, 40% of the lives lost. We have 50, we have 50 states. We have 320 million Americans. This, this crisis was serious, but it consumed everyone's entire being and it and and there was a there was let's put it this way there were considerations other than just saving lives i'll leave it at that cuz you don't see you see democrats now talking about eventually opening up and it's like wait a second no texas is already opening up and they they've done so much better than new york and new jersey and michigan and illinois so, and Florida has done even better than Texas. And yet, and yet DeSantis doesn't get the credit that Cuomo gets for actual horrendous decision making. Go look at the New York Times statistics. You tell me the top four highest per capita rates are Democratic run states with New York and New Jersey leading the entire country. So when Jonathan Swan said, well, as a country, we're not doing as good in per capita rates. Well, yeah, that's because I mean, Trump either didn't want to disparage certain governors or he just didn't have the data in front of how new york and new jersey well in new york two of the most populous states they have the highest per capita rates obviously it's going to increase the per capita rate of the country in addition to uh the highest per capita rates are also in blue states so um I, I thought that you you had all the answers. If you have all the answers as a Democrat, as a liberal, if you then why do you, why did you preside over the worst outcomes? Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe.